these two into an electric field which is produced by this rubber rod. I have to rub with the cat fur and I believe it was negative. But if you, you never have to remember whether it's negative or positive, of course, that is not so important. What is in a name after all? But it is, happens to be negative. Okay, so now we go here. I bring it here. I hope that no sparks will fly over because that ruins the demonstration. And now, notice what I do. While the, while the rod is here, I separate them. So as I was holding it there, things were going on in there that you and I couldn't see, but the electrons, the rubber rod is negative, electrons were shifting in this direction, and this is now positive and that is now negative. If I take this one and I touch it with the electroscope, you clearly see that there is charge on this. How can I show you now that there is charge of different polarity on the other one? Well, the way I will do that is I will approach this electroscope by bringing this sphere very close to it. And if this charge is different than the charge that is on it, the electroscope will, the reading will become smaller. And why is that? Why will the reading become smaller? Well, here is the situation of the electroscope now. And here is that ball that you see on top. This is upside down there. If this is all negative, that's why it is apart. If now I approach this here with an object which is positively charged, and I claim that this one now is positively charged because this one was negatively charged, then electrons are afraid of the positive charge, so more will go. Excuse me, electrons love the positive charge, so the electrons want to come to the positive charge, so these electrons drift down again. And so if they come down, fewer will be here, and so you will see this. If, however, I put here a negative rod, then the electrons which are here want to go further away, they will stream up and therefore the reading will become larger. So you can always through induction test what the polarity is of your charge. Let's hope that this one is still holding its charge while I was talking. So I claim now that if this polarity is different and if it's still there when I approach the electroscope, come very close, that the reading should become a little smaller without even touching it. Let's see whether that works. You see, it goes down. You see, it goes down. It goes down. So through induction, I have demonstrated that this has indeed a different polarity from this one. If I approach it with this one, it would go further out, unless it already is at a maximum. Let's try that. You see, it goes further out. So not only have I demonstrated that I created the dipole, but you've also seen that by means of induction that you can demonstrate um, that the, there's a difference in polarity between the two spheres. If I create a dipole and I put that dipole in, a, in an electric field, the dipole will start to rotate. Let's first talk about it, why it rotates, and then I will try to demonstrate that by making a dipole, a big one, this big, right in front of you, almost as big as the one there. So let's have a, an electric field, like so. And I bring in this electric field a dipole, a biggie. Here, this is the one I'm going to use for this demonstration. Ping pong balls on either side, they are conducting and they are con connected with a rod which is not conducting. And so here is this dipole. So this rod is not conducting, and this is a conducting, and this is a conductor. And let's suppose this is positive and this is negative for now. And I'll show you how we get the charge on it. Well, the positive charge will experience a force in this direction, always in the direction of the electric field, and the negative charge will experience a force always upstream. And now there is a torque on this. And when there's a torque on this dipole, it will start to rotate clockwise. 
And of course, if it overshoots the field lines, when it is in this direction, the torque will reverse. It's very easy to see. And so what you will see, it's going to oscillate, and if there is enough damping, it will come to a halt, more or less, in the direction of the field line. And this is something that I can demonstrate. First, I have to make a dipole of this kind. And the way I will do that is the following. This is a metal bar. This is insulator. And here is this, there's these two ping pong balls. The one on this side has a yellow marker. The one on that side has an orange marker. And I'm going to attach them, holding them up against this metal bar. In other words, here is this dipole. It's not a dipole yet. Metal. Metal. And here is a metal bar. This is a conductor which connects them. I'm going to turn on the Van de Graaff here. And the Van de Graaff creates an electric field. So we have the Van de Graaff here. And let's suppose that this Van de Graaff creates positive charge. Sometimes the Van de Graaff creates positive charge on the dome. Others can be designed to create negative charge on the dome. And remember, for now, I assume that's positive. What will happen now? Electrons want to go in this direction. So this becomes negative. Protons, positive charge stays behind. So that becomes, through induction, a dipole. Because I have them connected. I have them connected with this metal bar. So these electrons can flow through this bar and end up here. Now, I remove the bar. And so when I remove the bar, I have created now a dipole. I have here an insulating thread, and I have a fishing rod. And at the end of my fishing rod, I have now a permanent dipole. With that permanent dipole, I'm now going to probe the electric field around this Van de Graaff. I could have chosen the same Van de Graaff, but there's a reason why I picked this one. And as I walk around this Van de Graaff, you will see that this fishing rod, at the end is this dipole, that the dipole always wants to go radially inwards or outwards, depending on how you look at it, of this field. So I can probe this field and make you see for the first time that there is indeed, somewhere here, a strong radial field going in or out of the Van de Graaff. And now comes something very interesting, which I found out this morning for the first time when I did this experiment. If the other Van de Graaff there is also positive when I run it, how do you think this dipole is going to align then if I walk into it? Will the negative ball be closer to the Van de Graaff or will the positive one go closer to the Van de Graaff? So I give you 30 seconds to think about it. So I make the dipole as it is here. Let's assume this one is positive, this Van de Graaff. So this side becomes minus, I call that A, and this side become positive, that's B. I now walk with this dipole, I bring it in this field, and let's assume that one is also positive. We don't know that yet. How will the dipole align now? Will A go inwards or will A go outwards? Who thinks A goes inward? Very good. Who says A goes outward? Okay, A will go inward if the two Van de Graaffs have the same polarity. So if that doesn't happen, <laughs> that doesn't mean that physics doesn't work. It means the two Van de Graaffs have different polarities. And we'll see what happens. So let me first then create a dipole. So here is the, the dipole. It's sorted out now. I turn on the, this Van de Graaff. So induction takes place. Remember that the yellow is pointing towards the Van de Graaff and that the orange is away from the Van de Graaff. Okay? So I induce a dipole. Oh, I really should redo that. I don't know what happens when it... I have to remove the field first. Okay. The yellow was inside, right? Was that the way it was? Okay, yellow inside, there we go. So now it's creating a dipole through this metal bar. 